Okay. Sorry about that. Um, Um, <clears throat> okay, awesome. Um, are we good? That's audio. Everything's on. Some technical difficulties on my end. Um, okay, so first things first, um, we're going to access um, some things from the, the Google Drive. So I'm going to paste that into the chat um, and that's accessible. Um, throughout the class. And then um, what I also, what I'm gonna do at the end of class, I hope I remember, is I put together a very short Google form, like a survey um, that will uh, help me get like a grasp of where you guys are holding. Um, we're basically at the halfway mark um, and I want to get your feedback. And I'm, I'm thinking of doing it a lot more frequently because feedback is very valuable to me um, to keep this class entertaining and, and interesting. So. Um, okay. So I'm going to share that one share it toward the end, towards the end of class. And Um, okay, so last class, um, we went over a couple of things that I think we should still review a little bit. Um, uh, um, and so I'm going to go over them this class. Um, uh, I'm going to start off by uh, I, I thought I thought it was interesting to kind of we spoke about color so to kind of fixate and obsess over a color just a little bit and to kind of explore um, its full power it's how it could be implied in different in different scenarios so this class I want to so last class we kind of spoke about how it could be used in many different scenarios in general in this class I wanted to share three um, real life uses that like featured a shade of red basically um, in a design project um, with like a, like a comp like um, very obviously used it not just in passing but very obviously used it Okay. Um, and again, if you have any questions, um, put it in the question and answer. Does everyone hear me? Can you hear my, can you hear my lips are moving, but can you hear me? If you, someone said they can't hear me, so I want to know if that's it. A me thing. Okay, so seems like most people could hear me as expected. That's good. All right, let's get started. Okay, so this is promised the last time. Um, we're gonna fixate on, <laughs> on one specific color. Um, but it's all based on the idea um, that there really is no right or wrong way to use a color. Um, and it really depends on the context. It depends on how you use it. It depends on the industry. It depends on your target audience. Um, that's, will, that will determine the effect of your color, right? So get started. So uh, I have my notes. I wrote down um, my thoughts about these each specific project. So I, I'm going to reference them as I speak. Um, 
So first project is for a company called Keeps by a design company called Red Antler, right? So Keeps is the product or the client and Red Antler is the design company. So Keeps is a hair loss treatment company for men. Um, and the, the kind of the challenge, the brief that Red Antler was presented with is that, or not Red Antler, but the, the company Keeps was trying to tackle was that um, once you start losing your hair, once you're in a kind of a very extreme state of hair loss, there really isn't that much you can do. Um, so a lot of the, so what they're offering is a preventative measure, some kind of like a, can basically treating hair loss before it begins. So their target was to younger adults, younger men. And, okay. And so what Red Antler, the design, the design company realized is that young men, or young people don't wanna be thinking about losing their hair, right? Um, it's uncomfortable, it's embarrassing, it's an obvious way to show that you're aging. So most of the time, young men won't be think about preventative measures. So the challenge really was, how could we engage and motivate young adults, not necessarily teenagers, young adults in their 20s, maybe even early 30s, um, to be proactive about taking care of how long their hair will last. Um, Okay, so someone in the chat said they don't hear anything. Um, I think that's something on your end because um, I got feedback from other people in the class and they said that they weren't able to hear. So maybe make sure that your volume is on or that you, I don't know. There are, there are ways to, un, to uh, mute volume on, on your end. So um, I guess be, uh, be aware of that. So basically, this is a statement from the company. We rooted the brand keeps in the idea of proactivity and focus on motivating men to take charge of their hair loss as early as possible. Um, with a very frank approach and a bit of wit, keeps became a rallying brand to urge every customer to become a man of action. So what does that look like? How do you visually um, push people to um, behave uh, to be proactive. So they took the, on this kind of like medicinal, um, but very clean and very designed approach. Um, and their main color, the brand color is red. And you can see that kind of minimalistically, but kind of splashed across all the products, but like a second color of green. And the idea really was to use the messaging and, uh, and, the, and the icons to um, make this something desirable, something that people would want to have in their house and not something that's embarrassing and looks like they bought it off an infomercial. So again, there's no like deep psychology behind the color, except that what we spoke about red is kind of very engaging. It grabs you very quickly. Um, and it could be related to aggression a little bit or being very forward. So. Maybe, so that's, that's my opinion. They don't write extensively about why they use that color. So that's how I understand why they use that color. So the second case study is by a company called Base Design and they did it for the New York Times Food Festival. So the New York Times has a lot of writing about food and cooking and I don't know if it's yearly, uh, I don't know if it's annual, but they have, a, they have a food festival where they invite a bunch of high-end vendors to sell their food and it's open to the public. And there's probably some kind of, right? It's just a very, I'm pretty sure it's open to the public, a cultural event. Um, so it's all about food, right? So how would, you, um, how would you brand or how would you design a food festival, right? When we think of food, we think of, maybe brown colors, greens, you know, maybe it's very, very colorful. That's maybe the image we have in our mind. So if we had to design something like this, we would probably make it um, very colorful, 
right? Green, orange, food that make us think of food. Um, so the challenge here was specifically because this is for the New York Times, the company, the design company wanted to make this festival feel elevated and, and sophisticated and unique. Um, so they were going, they, they were like, okay, we know the typical way that this looks, that this a food festival is meant to look. How could we make it different, make it interesting, make it something people want to be a part of? Um, so they, right, they, 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 this is their words, they challenge the standard visual language, um, and which usually contains like food photography and cute illustrations of like vegetables and stuff like that. So they're like, okay, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do, we're gonna come up with a unique creative approach. So they created, <clears throat> they created uh, typography, they created a font um, that abstractly references like the different uh, uh, ingredients involved. So it's up to our imagination what these could mean, right? Maybe it's salt, maybe it's pepper, maybe it's pasta. Um, that's, that's all up to us. But we can see that the theme of the festival is white and red, which are two colors that I would say I wouldn't have immediately associated with food. But when I see it here, I kind of understand that this is a elevated, uh, like it's elevated as in it's sophisticated. It's not just this regular farmer's market food festival. And there's definitely a reference just using the red to different kinds of foods. And I definitely see pasta references, <laughs> um, right? And the way it's used, in my opinion, is really, really interesting. It makes like what are a regular space look really like almost like a carnival. Um, so I like this. And again, right, we're using red. Okay, so one more. So this is a, a rebrand of an of a marketing of a advertising company called Ogilvy. And it was done by a company called Collins. So that's confusing. Totally fine. You don't even remember that. Um, so Ogilvy is a huge, huge advertising company since the 50s, they introduced a lot of like advertising and marketing techniques that are still in use today. Um, but they wanted to change with the way they looked. Um, they wanted to change the way they looked for like the digital um, social media kind of very fast paced form of marketing. And the by changing what they looked outside, they were telling their clients that, oh, we're also changing the way we work. Um, so they started by changing the logo and I'm gonna show you in a second what the logo looked like before, but they also um, picked like a very specific shade of red and they're like, okay, this is our red. This shade is what we're gonna use across all different platforms. It's engaging. It's not a very harsh, but it's like warm, um, right? That is a subjective opinion, but in my opinion, that's why I, I think they, they picked that. Um, this is an example. You can see starting at the bottom, the logo 1964, and then it developed, uh, you know, it was redone, redone until finally they brought it together into one word, Ogilvy. And it also shows like everything being connected which was something they wanted to communicate how the whole company is connected. And this is, these are some applications um, where the logo is usually, is the thing that gets the color of the brand red, the, the, main, the main color red, and then everything else, the secondary colors. And again, we can see that being applied to the typography. Um, okay, cool. I hope that was interesting. Um, so, we're gonna go into an exercise now. Um, and we're gonna go over just a few of the things that we spoke about last class. So the first thing I wanna make sure everyone knows how to do is how to download and import images into Illustrator. Um, it's very useful to be able to do that, right? To reference like hand drawn artwork or sketches. So let's do it. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is I included a link. Um, I'm going to post it again, a link to the Google Drive 
in the chat part of Zoom. Okay, so stop sharing for now. Um, is it? Chat. Okay, I'm just going to share it again just in case people are going to see it. Um, and I'm going to open it from there. Okay. Um, Okay, so I clicked on the link and this is what I'm looking at, right? Uh, class 10, that's the class that we're in. Um, and the way we download an image is we right click on it. Okay, right click. And we see this drop down. a bunch of different options come up and towards the bottom, there's something that says download. And that's what I'm going to do. And download it. Uh, I would recommend keeping this tab open considering that um, we're going to use other things from the Google Drive. Okay, so I got, um, got the image. Let's open Adobe Illustrator. And I'm going to make a regular Um, I'm going to make a letter, letter size, uh, right? Go to print letter. I'm going to name this. Hello. We did do this last class, but I'm also going to use this, uh, to teach something else. So if you did it before, probably could use a little bit of practice going over it. And if not, then this is a chance. And then I'm also going to turn, um, Sure, I can see your questions. Okay, so I'm also going to turn the orientation of my artboard from uh, portrait to landscape. So I'm going to hit that little guy. Um, you can also do this once you're inside the program. So if you kind of skip that, that's fine. And um, I'm, I'm going to change the color mode and it's being weird. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, okay, great. Okay, so this is what I want to see. All right, so how do we import an image? Um, there are two ways to import an image. The first is going to file and going down to place. All right, the so file place. Um, Uh, there we go. Hello, sketch. And just like it was a square, I'm going to click and drag. I don't want to just drop it into my file because then it's going to be huge. Um, and then I rotate it by hovering over the edges, holding shift to keep it if I want to. So um, I said I said you would be able to change it inside of Illustrator. So essentially, you're editing your artboard. Um, and the way we edit our artboard is we go to our keyboard and we press shift O that pulls up our art artboard tool. Our artboard tool is also available on the left hand panel. Um, you'll see right here, you can see that this <clears throat> icon is shaded differently than the rest. This indicates that that's the active tool. So within that, um, my artboard options or my basic artboard options appear at the top uh, of my of my workspace. And again, we can see the option to toggle between the different orientations of my artboard at the top left corner. It's kind of a little figure inside of a frame. And um, when you hover over it, it tells you the title. Um, Someone seems to be having a problem downloading um, from Google. So 
I'm assuming that most people, when they right click, they get a menu, right? It's not just me. Another thing you can do is um, just troubleshooting here. You can select the image and then go to these three dots um, right here. Again, I'm not, a, I'm not a Google guru. Um, so select that and then three dots, more actions, and then download at the bottom. Okay, so. Um, I, and again, let's, let's go over that one more time. Um, so I'm gonna be, I'm placing an image um, and there are two ways to do that. There's one way to just place it and then you, you, you place the image at full size and um, there's a way to solve it. You zoom out all the way, control minus all the way and then scale it down. Um, but if, and I don't wanna do that. So I just, with my, cursor loaded, I will make a square. And we can tell that my cursor is loaded because there are these little icons, right? It says one of one, these like document sizes and it shows a preview of my image. All right, so first thing I wanna do actually, before I do anything to my image is I wanna make another layer because this is gonna be our artwork layer. Well. This is going to be our template layer. And then we're going to have our original artwork on top of this. So um, let's go ahead and do that. Um, and of course, uh, well, not of course, um, we rotate the image by hovering over the side and we see these double headed arrows. And then we hold shift to do that. Um, if you don't hold shift, then you're not really going to get it at an exact angle, which is good sometimes, and we're actually going to use that. But for now, I'm just going to kind of roughly change the orientation. Um, so let's make another layer. Um, so we open our layers panel. And if you don't see your layers window, you could go to window, go to layers and make sure you get a little check next to it. And then you will find it at your right hand corner. There are two uh, squares on top of each other. Um, okay, and I'm going to make a new layer by going to the bottom right, um, and uh, let's let's name it something. Uh, template. We name it just by double clicking over the default name of our of our layer. And artwork. Okay. Um, so. Today, um, we're gonna to be doing two things. Um, we're gonna quickly be going over the pen tool, and then we're also gonna learn how to use uh, the blend tool, um, or I would like to, depending on our time. So the next thing I'm gonna do, and we, we did this uh, last week, is we set down some guides uh, because I want my text to sit at a straight line. Although I'm curious if we should even bother with that. Um, I'm going to do that, but you don't need to do that. that Makes sense. I'm just going to drop down guides. Um, you could also turn them on. You could turn them on by pressing control R, or you could go to window, go to guides, uh, view, I'm sorry, view, ruler, guides. So the reason why I'm not being super specific about this is two reasons. One, we went over it last week. Uh, last class, and then two is because the point of the exercise only is somewhat related to making this sketch. So I'm pretty comfortable with where this is. I like that it's straight. If you don't want it to make it straight, that's fine too. Um, and now I'm going to lock it. And if we remember how to lock something, um, right next to the, we in our layers window, right next to the eyeball, there's a uh, empty space when it's unlocked. When I click on it, a lock appears. And what that means is that I can't edit the guides or any objects that are on the lock layer. It's kind of locked um, and uneditable, which is good. 
and you can unlock it very easily. Okay, so this is the tricky part. What we wanna do is we want to have this word as a continuous um, line. We don't want it to be a bunch of lines next to each other. So what do I, what do I mean? Well, let me show you. I'm, I'm using control plus to zoom in, control minus to zoom out. And then on the, or alternatively, you can use the magnifying glass on your keyboard. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, not on your keyboard, on the left hand um, tool panel, little magnifying glass, and then you click the zoom in and then you press alt on your keyboard to zoom out. And we can see that when I press alt, it changes from a plus to a minus zoom out. But I like using control plus minus. Um, okay, so um, that layer selected. Um, I'm gonna press P on my keyboard to pull up my pen tool. And uh, I'm gonna trace this uh, somewhat liberally. Um, so I also wanna make sure that we remember how to make curves. Um, if we have a decent, you know, even a rough understanding of how to make curves. And I wanna make sure that, like, would you like me to go over it? Would you like me to go over it? If you didn't understand it at all, or you would, you think you would benefit from a lot more uh, explanation, like going over it step by step, let me know. Um, okay, so I'm just going to set some points down, drag, and then I'm going to remove um, the fill. Um, do that. Do that. Um, okay, so turn your attention. Everyone, uh, someone mentioned a, a problem that they're having. So turn your attention to my screen. Um, so let's look at my layers panel, right? We have two layers and depending on which layer is selected, that is where our changes and our objects and whatever we create li uh, will live. Now, how do we know which layer is selected? Because when we click on it, it's blue. That the layer that we're on is, uh, that we select is blue. So when you see this little pencil with a with a X through it, it means that you're on the lock layer and it's saying, hey, you can't edit this layer. Select another layer. So select the layer that is unlocked in order to edit it and you'll see a regular pen tool. Um, now, how am I making curves? I'm making curves simply by setting down a start point, setting down an end point, and then playing around experimenting with and right and dragging to experiment with um, my curve. And it's great that we have a sketch so that I could um, reference it, right? Um, setting down a point. And I want you to notice that I'm not ending my path at all. I'm keeping it one consistent thing. And that's really important for what we're gonna do next. So. Um, let me show you, let me show you what not to do. Put this in another layer, lock it. Okay. What you shouldn't be doing is setting down a line and then making a brand new one. Oh, you can't even see it because it's black. Because I didn't think about that, right? These are two separate lines. Um, and when I edit one, I won't edit the other. So what I want you guys to do is to have one fluid line. Um, so let me know if you're having trouble doing that. With the O, I kind of botch it a little bit. Um, and how did I, 
So, okay. Let's go over how to do this. Again, I'm not spending a ton of time on this right now, unless you want me to, and I will. Um, but what I kind of just want this as our base and then we'll edit it later. <clears throat> okay, so um, I want, I'm, I wanna close my circle. I'm not really sure how to describe it. So let's, Hide that for now. Okay, so we have this word and we can see that it's a solid single line. We can tell because when I select one portion of it, the whole thing is selected. Um, so what I want, so, so turn your attention to my screen um, and we can see that I'm almost done the O area uh, and So how do I close it? So if I um, if I go from the last point I set down and I kind of retrace my steps, um, I'm gonna get this to zoom in. So less distraction. Do we see how my um, my pen tool has a minus? That means to say that the pen tool thinks I want to delete that point because I'm going over an already existing point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift to tell the pen tool that I want to set down another anchor. Oops, right? So that happens. And I don't want to do that. That looks bad. That. It's tricky. Pen tool is a tricky tool to use. Okay. I'm satisfied with that. I, I want to make sure I want to make sure people got that. Um, you don't have to be editing anything like I am. All right, that, <laughs> that looks a little funky. Um, so I could go over it anyhow, though. I'm just going to. Okay, let's say that looks good. Um, so I wanna move on to the next step. Um, and I also wanna make sure that everyone has something to work with. Um, we need some kind of like pen, like line artwork. So if you don't, let me know. Okay, so I'm not getting any um, responses to that. So I'm gonna move on. So let's talk about the blend tool. The blend tool is a, is a neat tool in an illustrator that will create a bunch of shapes between two already existing shapes. Um, and it's a lot of fun and we're gonna use it, do a cool effect. But then we should also understand that we could use it in many, many different ways. And but right now I'm just gonna kind of showcase that in, uh, in, this, in this application. That looks super bad and it's starting to be crazy. Um, okay, so what I want you to do is to make a circle, to make a circle. Um, and I want it to have a fill and no stroke. So I, uh, I select my, my, my circle and I, I press shift X. Alternatively, I could go to the left-hand panel at the bottom um, and where uh, my fill and stroke setting are, there's a double-headed arrow. And when I press that, it swaps the color of my fill of my stroke to my fill right and i want two of the exact same shape so i don't want to make two different circles i want to copy the one i already have okay um so 
and that for that um, control C control V works fine. What happened? Okay, so I just need two circles. It doesn't really matter where they are, um, and I'm making them relatively small, and you'll see why. Um, so what I want to do is I want to place a circle at each uh, end of my path. Okay, so I'm going to place this circle. Does that need to be done? Maybe, no, never mind. Let's not do that. <laughs> Let's not do that. Let's just have two circles. Ooh. Um, Let's have two circles and let us apply a gradient to each circle. Even better, I'm gonna delete the second one I made and just first edit a single one and just make a copy. So the way we make a gradient, um, one of the easiest ways to make a gradient is in the left-hand panel in the area where we can edit the stroke and the fill of our, of our shape. Um, there's something that when you hover over it, it says gradient. Oh, interesting. Or you can press, I don't even know what it's called. I don't know what that's called. Never mind. Okay, so is everyone able to see that? Everyone able to find that, that little gradient box? Okay, um, and when I do that, a gradient settings box will pop up. Um, and that is where, right, and we spoke about a gradient is, an, is a name for when we're blending two different colors uh, seamlessly or more like gradually. Um, and, and the program will add a bunch of colors in between to make it look like they're blending into each other. So. I'm going to apply that to my circle as a fill. And I'm going to edit, um, I'm going to edit my fill. I'm gonna edit my gradient by simply double clicking. Why does it do that? This has happened before. <laughs> um, that's Okay, I don't know how to solve that. You should probably see that because hopefully you're not getting the same problems with your double screen. Um, someone posted a question in the chat. Um, so first, I don't have an answer to your question. Um, that's kind of weird. And two, I guess it'd be best in the question and answer area. But yeah, I don't have an answer to your question. So I'm just gonna have a default gradient for now. Um, um, and I'm gonna select both of them, select both of those circles with a gradient in them. And we're going to go to object in the top left hand, the top left drop down. We're going to go to blend. And we're going to go to me. Or you can press Alt Control B to make a blend, to add a blend effect between two shapes. So we can think about blending. As, or the blend tool as kind of a gradient, but instead we're using objects instead of colors. And um, the program will add a bunch of steps in between to make some kind of gradual um, transition between two objects. Um, so that can make some really cool effects. So let's, let's press make, and we can see that automatically a bunch of other circles were added between. Um, and if we go back to object, 
back blend and we go to blend options, we get our little options box. Okay, so we select the two shapes that we want to make a blend with. We go to the object uh, drop down menu. We go to blend and we press make. And then we um, go back to object, back to blend, and we access our blend options. Okay. And within blend options, there are three different modes of blending. Um, one is smooth color, one is specified distance, and the one we're going to use is specified steps. What that means is that I'm telling the program how many, um, how many shapes I wanted to add in between my two starting shapes. Okay. And when you press preview, I can see my changes in, um, in action in live live right so when we when we go to the specified steps area um we can put in a number and i'm going to put in a pretty high number it goes up to a thousand steps i'm going to add in 500. that's really ugly i was able to change my um well, i could actually so I'm just going to do this gradient. You, I just can't stand that color. That's slightly bearable. So now what we really see, it seems like a solid shape, but what really, what they really, uh, what's really happening here is that there's a 500 circles added in between. So now um, so I weren't able to do that. Let's make sure everyone is able to do that. If you weren't able to do that, could you, you, you just have to have something that looks similar to this object. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to select your path and your blend tool. Okay, so select both of them. You could do that by just dragging over both of them. Uh, again, if your pen, pen tool, your stroke should be uh, all connected, not only grouped, but actually connected by points. And then just select both of them, okay? Now let's go back to the to object, back to blend, and then instead of, uh, and then go to the bottom and press replace spine. Um, the way you change the color of your gradient is by going to the gradient window. Someone asked a question about changing the color of the gradient, going to the gradient window. It's much easier when it's not in blend mode. So my screen is showing, why is it glitching? Right, so when I select an object with a gradient, my gradient window will show me a bunch of circles along a, along a line. And that's basically telling me all the different colors in my gradient. And when I double click on any of those, well, for me, <laughs> it gets locked on the top, but you should see a, a color window up here. I'm sorry, I don't know why I need to troubleshoot why my like windows are getting stuck at the top beyond, I don't know. So let's, so let's do that. Select your path, select your blend, your blend and go to um, blend, um, go to object, blend and then replace spine. And what that did is it took my blend tool, my blend, um, the blend between my two circles and applied it um, along um, my 
my line, my path. So it, it's, it, it has a um, kind of a 3D look to it almost. Zoom in, right? It looks like a bunch of... So there are many different things we could do with it. Um, it's a lot of fun. You could go back to, back to object, blend, blend options, and I'm going to increase the amount of steps. Let's hit my circle to my thing. That didn't do that much. I'm going to go back. I'm going to make it a thousand steps. And um, hopefully my computer doesn't. Oh, that's a hundred. <laughs> we can see the, it reduces the amount of shapes. Okay, so that's the blend tool. So we, we learned two things really quickly and we can do that, uh, take a square, I can take a circle, select both of them, go to object, blend, blend options. Um, three. And nothing happened because I, I need about I need to tell the computer to make it the program to make it so we can see that um, what a blend tool does is it transitions from one object to another and it will add as many steps as you ask between that transition so we can see here that a square is becoming a circle or a circle is becoming a square in which direction you read so that's the basic effect of the blend tool and then you can apply it to strokes like we did with our hello over here um okay was that uh before we move on to something else i want to make sure that that made sense so was there anyone who was not able to do this Um, and if you're not able to do it, what kind of issues? So the way I, um, control Z, I'm pressing control Z on my keyboard. So I have my, uh, my blend and I'm gonna quickly go over how I did that to begin with. So I have two circles. Right. And, you know, we don't even have to add a gradient. We can make this green. Make this yellow. Just two different circles. I select them both. I go to object. Uh, and the drop down left top left drop down, go to object blend and press make. Okay. I want to make sure everyone's able to do that. Right. And then what I'm, what I want to tell, um, what I want to tell the program is I want to increase the amount of steps that there are between my two primary shapes, my two primary objects. Um, and the way I do that is I go to object, I go to blend, and then I go to blend options. And I'll only see these things, I'll only see blend options um, if I have my uh, kind of blend selected. Go to blend options. And then within blend options, there's a drop down with three different, um, three different kind of categories and we're going to go to the middle one that says specified steps when i go to specified steps i want to put in like a high number like 800 press okay now i have what seems to be a seamless transition between a kind of i don't know that's not teal like mint green and another kind of mint green, like yellow, 
right? And then the way I apply my blend effect to a path, a custom path that I made, is I select my custom path and I select my blend at the same time. And I go back to object, back to blend. And then instead of going to blend options, I go to replace spine. And that's how I apply my effect to that. Okay. Um, so I'm, oh no. Someone said they have a red line on the top of their artboard. I don't know. I don't know what that looks like. Um, is it a path? I don't know what it could be. Okay, so terrific. This is what this is what we've come to. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to review um, files file types very quickly, um, just because I feel like you guys probably came across it. Um, in your using Illustrator on your own. So I want to go over that really quickly. And of course, uh, there's going to be time for troubleshooting and questions um, at the end of at the end of this class. So let's talk about file types very quickly. So the first file type is called a PDF. And this is the icon for a PDF. A PDF is kind of is an editable document uh, that's by Adobe. So I'm pretty sure it can only be used if you have some kind of Adobe PDF reader and unless it's converted to another kind of file. Um, and it's very similar to a printed document. So PDFs are what you would save your flyers with it would what you would say if your booklets or books are right a lot of printed material a lot of text and that's usually it's usually shared within a pdf so i just wanted to show you what that looked like um the next kind of main file type is called an svg um and an svg this is the icon for it it looks similar to the well it looks exactly like the adobe illustrator icon um but this is what it looks like. The reason why it looks like this is because it could be opened by Adobe Illustrator and it could be edited like a Illustrator file. But even if someone doesn't have Illustrator, um, the graphics within an SVG will retain their very fluid, um, scalable characteristics. So it's really good for web browsing and really good for um, websites uh, and it could be compressed, like it could be reduced in size um, as, a, as a file, but still retain uh, its visual quality. Then there's um, something called a PNG. A PNG is a higher quality digital file. Um, it's usually, it's meant for like digital graphics. Um, and it's different from a JPEG, which is meant for photography and actually a file type created by kind of photography association that, um, and, and the JPEG basically, it's a reduced file size. So when you save something as a JPEG, um, let's say uh, Instagram only takes JPEGs. You can only, well, you can also upload videos, but you can't upload PNGs uh, and I'm pretty sure it's because PNGs are too rich quality. The, the quality is too rich and JPEGs are lower resolution. So it's just good to know is that when you save something as a JPEG, it will usually have more information in it. So it's larger and it's also, it also has more quality. Um, okay, well, that was it. <laughs> um, that was that.
Okay. So the next thing I wanted us to do, well, the first thing actually is let's go to our uh, Google, the Google Drive, the class Google Drive. Just plugged in. It's not, sorry. I needed to plug my computer in. There we go. Okay, so the first thing I wanted uh, that I want us to download is um, is the think it says think good colors jpeg and uh, we can right click download it or go to these three dots at the all the way to the top right three dots more actions download and then I want us to download the texture png download that. You could delete these after class. And then finally, open up the exercise file. It says, it says exercise um, in the class and folder and just copy paste, just uh, not paste, just copy. Um, the whole phrase. Um, and going to paste it. I just press control N to make a new document or if you go to file new, I feel like we know how to do that already. Um, but instead of making a, a letter size, I'm going to make a tabloid size. Tabloid is a 11 by 17 inch, um, artboard, um, corresponds to the paper size. And it's just a larger workspace. Um, and the way we get that is you go to print, we go to blank document presets. Um, and if you don't see it, then you'll see a little button that says load more presets. And then you should see these eight options and just select tabloid. Um, and my orientation is going to be landscape. But I remember again that we could change um, the orientation. Our color mode is going to be CMYK, uh, just in case you wanted to print it. Um, I'm going to give this a name, just poster. Okay. Actually, no, I want it in portrait, not landscape. That was, that's my bad. Um, which means I want the, uh, the long side to be vertical and the short side to be horizontal. All right. So let's go ahead and just paste our text in. It will land anywhere on the page. Then press control plus to zoom in. Okay. Um, did we do that? Oh, and uh, one more, one more thing I wanted us to do. Um, oh, you paste by pressing Control V. Sorry, sorry, I forgot to mention that. Control V on your keyboard will paste it somewhere on your artboard. Um, I actually need you guys to go. Okay, so first I wanna, let's make sure everyone's up to that. So we have a tabloid size. So it's a slightly larger than a letter size tabloid. Um, and we have the long side running vertically and not horizontally. And then we just pasted our text anywhere on our artboard for now. Okay, um, I need, so once we're good with that, we're going to go to um, fonts.adobe.com. Let 
I'm going to sign in for my head. Um, someone said they can't see the downloaded file that I sent. So it should be in the class 10 folder. Um, and it will be called think good colors and texture.png. Okay. Um, just make sure first that you're in the right folder. Okay, so what I want you to do um, when you're on the fonts.adobe.com window is I want you to go to the search bar. Uh, maybe watch my screen for a second um, before I doing it yourself, because I think visually this will be a lot more self-explanatory. So I'm going to the search bar, Adobe fonts, search bar. I'm going to type in good pro. Good pro, FF good is what I want. So actually type in FF good. No, I'm waiting. So. Okay, so <clears throat> um, all you need to do, so you can see I already have this activated, but all you need to do is go to, um, right? So is there a way to make this more explicit? Everyone able to follow me so far? Go to the fonts search bar and type in either good pro or FF space good. FF stands for the company that made this specific typeface called font font, very creative name. Uh, so um, some companies will do this. Um, they'll put their name of the company and then they'll have the name of the typeface. So font fonts and then good is the name of the typeface. And what I want you to do is I want you to just activate all of the fonts, which is simple, simply as toggling this little thing. Um, so I'm not gonna deactivate it, but all you have to do is press it and it will activate all those fonts. Is anyone uh, trying to activate it and they're not able to? So, because we're going to use this typeface in our uh, in our project. Oh, look at all these very big type family, and we need all of them. So, all fonts active. We want to activate all the fonts. Okay, um, come back to that if we need to, but for now, get it, Adobe. It might take a little bit of time um, for your Adobe Illustrator to process that you just activated all those fonts. So just give it a minute or two. Um, okay, so the first thing, I guess while we wait for that to load on your end, I'm going to now place that um, image think good colors, we're going to place that in our program. So file, place, um, think good colors, place, like that. Um, the way you activate, someone asked, how do you activate them all at once? You have to go to the top of the page 
So if you bring your attention to my screen, if you bring your attention to my screen, you have an option to activate each font individually, but since there are 98 different fonts in this typeface, that's going to take you a while. So what you want to do is you want to stay at the top of the page and kind of opposite where the title of the typeface is, FF good, you'll see a option to activate all fonts or all typefaces. Well, all fonts in the typeface. Um, Right, so top of the page. Um, are people able to do this? Are people able to activate all typefaces? Okay, so someone's posting the questions in the chat. Can you please post them in the, in the question and answer? I really wanna focus on a one place where everyone, um, What's your questions? But I'm going to answer it. Um, so it seems like one person's having that problem. Is there anyone else who is not? Is there anyone else who's having that problem as well? Um, and the problem we're trying to solve here is how do, how do we activate all fonts at once? I'm just for the heck of it. Someone said, yes, yes, you're having that problem or you're not able to do that as well. I hope people are not activating 98 fonts. <laughs> I'd rather just figure out a way to make this work. I'm going to deactivate it. All right, so I deactivate it for myself. I'm loading the page again. Okay, so now what I see when I don't have this active is I have the name of the font, the name of the typeface, Yes, you do have to sign in with your Adobe account because this is an Adobe product. I did that as well, but I wasn't going to show you my login information, but I am signed into my account. Um, and the way I'm going to activate it is go to activate fonts. And then I have all these different options and I'm going to just toggle for every single one of them. Oops, I want to make sure every single one's Install. Okay. Um. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I actually want to break up my text. So let me zoom in all the way. I'm going to zoom into my paste the text in Adobe Illustrator, and I'm just going to double click inside the text box to access it. And I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to format it like this. Okay, this is how I'm gonna format it. Um, think on one line, good on one line, and it will on one line and be good on another. Okay. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Windows. I'm going to go to, should be in character. Oh, okay, I'm gonna to go to type and then character. So that's a, that's a few steps. I'm gonna leave my 
mouse on top of it. I'm inside of Adobe Illustrator. I went to Windows. I scrolled down to Type. And then I'm going to open the Character panel. Um, okay. Is anyone not able to do that? All right, open oh, character panel. Um, and again, if you want to reference how you should break up the text, bring your attention to my screen and just take a look. It's fairly simple. You want to think, um, enter, good, enter, and it will enter, be good, enter. Okay, so. And then I want you to open the character panel. So I want you to go to window, scroll down to type, you know, select character. And since mine is already open, there's a blue check next to it. Or you can press control T on your keyboard to open it up. Okay, so I'm just going to select my whole text box. And in my character panel, I have all the options um, that we familiarize yourself with before. I'm going to type in, in the uh, font selection window, I'm going to type in good. Uh, good. It's really big uh, for me because I'm using, I don't know, just my screen isn't really configured for this, but a okay, good pro, that's what it's called. It's kind of, I don't know why they didn't maintain the name of the typeface once it's in Adobe uh, Illustrator, but I'm just going to, I just, you want to see that this title is on top. It doesn't really matter which font you're using. Um, you want to make sure that right. You want to make sure that you're using that typeface. And the reason why I'm able to see this is because I activated it and I know it's active on Adobe, fonts.adobe.com. Now it might take a second or two to load, but you should be able to see that. If you don't see it, then what you could do is actually close this project. You don't have to close Illustrator. You can close this project, uh, save it, close it, and then reopen it really quickly. Uh, sometimes it has to just load. But I'm curious if that's a problem everyone's having. Is everyone not able to access the typeface? If you're not able to, let me know. Okay, so we have two people who can't. Is this, is this the case for everybody? And are we, I'm so loud. Are we sure that, um, are we sure that we had activated them on, on fonts.adobe, all fonts are active. And then once we go back to Illustrator, it might just take a little bit of time for it to load. Um, and the way you could speed up that process, what was that? No, oh, is by closing down the project, right? Pressing that. You want to save it? Yes. Choose where you want to save it to. I'll save it to my desktop. Save. I mean, just keep all default settings. And now I just closed down that project and I kept Adobe open and then I'll reopen it. Sometimes you just have to play around with um, what works for your machine or whatever. So let's go to, um, I'm gonna scroll down so 
not I'm not in the typeface anymore. I'm within the font. I'm within the weight. And I'm going to scroll down to um, where it says EXTD Ultra. Okay. Select that. Um, Okay. Um, I don't have an alternative font off the top of my head. You can use any font that you want, but uh, someone said, what font should I use instead of this one? Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> use anyone you want, I guess. Um, you can use Impact, which is a system font, but I'll, it would work best if you were able to access this. So let's do this. Okay. So the next thing I want you, the next thing I want you to do is in your character panel, there are a bunch of different options, right? Um, and what I want you to do is I want you to um, at the kind of the bottom part is the um, option to add all caps to your text. And what that does is it makes all of your text uppercase. So I want you to select that. Um, you can toggle it on or off. So it's two big T's next to each other, um, the bottom left, okay? So that will make everything all caps. And for those who are able to, for those who have access to the, this font, um, this typeface, um, I want you to select the word good. And I want you to, so if, uh, I guess you could bring your attention to my screen. I think it would make things quicker. So select, oops, select the word good by just double clicking. So I'm doing here inside of my text box and changing the, the font, keeping the typeface, but changing the font to compressed, um, where is it? Hmm. I'm only seeing an italic. There we go, compressed ultra. It's Okay, so it's gonna look like that. And the same thing to the phrase, be good. Um, so you wanna, I have to critique the naming convention of this, of this font. This font, it's for some reason it's difficult to find. Okay. So the way you toggle capital letters is you open the character panel. At the bottom left, there are two T's. And by clicking on it, you can change it. Unless, yeah, that should be the case. Okay, so now what I want to do is going to be kind of fun. Um, we're going to select all our, all our, fonts, the, like everything. We're going to right click and we're going to press um, can create outlines. Okay. Actually, I don't know. Is this the best way to do it? I'm trying to think of the... Actually, okay, let me take that back. Before we go to create outlines, I just want to make this as straightforward as possible for later on. So, um, I want I want to select each word and make it into its own text box. Okay, so I double click on thick. Um, I can 
control C, control V, and now it's its own text box. Um, and then I could delete it. Double click on good, control C, oops, control V, now it's its own text box. Delete that. And I do that for every part. It, it will make this, uh, this will make it easier later on. Okay. Okay, great. So now I have basically every line on its, in its own text box independent, uh, independently. Okay. And I'm using two, um, two fonts of a single typeface. Let me type them out. Conf ultra and extended ultra. These are different names or weights. Or, uh, yeah. Just make that bigger. Comp ultra, send ultra. All right. Now what I want to do is I want to create outlines. Creating outlines basically means I'm changing an active editable font into uh, into a vector shape. So I can select everything, right click. And when you right click um, on text, you'll be given an option to create outlines. Is everyone able to see that? Or you can also select your text um, and press shift control O. Um, someone said, ask, where do you find extended ultra? So um, with your character panel open under the typeface window, there will be a font window and you just scroll through it. It will be at the bottom, but in general, just the way you, the way you find it, you scroll through it, extended, uh, would be at the bottom extended and then ultra it's second to last. Okay. So I'm just going to copy these just in case you run through it later. So now I'm just going to select all of it. Um, right click create outlines. Okay. So now what happened is, is that I can't change um, the font or the font size in the character panel. So basically the character panel is no longer useful because now these are just shapes. Um, the way you highlight one word, give me a second. the way you highlight one word, there are a couple of ways to highlight one word. Um, first, you just drag over it like you would in a email or any kind of document, or you can double click, triple click to select the whole phrase, only double click to select a word. Okay, so now I have these independent objects and holding shift, just like, a, just like I would a, uh, a square or anything like that, I'm going to make these uh, pieces of type take up the full page. And I'm definitely going to go over this again, so don't worry. But I'm um, like this. And it should look something like this. This is what we're going for. We have tall and wide together. using my smart guides to tell me. I also want to align, I'm mean, just personally, I want to align the edges of my type up. So I'm being particular, do not have to be particular. 
we kind of have this rhythmic look over here. Okay. No, so once you outline your type, um, the, you scale it like you would scale a rectangle or a shape, which means that we have a, we have a square. How do I make the square bigger? I go to the edge and I drag towards where I want it to be bigger. Same thing, smaller, bigger. But we first have to outline our type. And the way you do that is by right clicking on the piece of type you want to outline. Right click, create outlines. So I save the copy. It's basically, yeah, it makes it um, like a plain shape. Okay. Just do that. Um, how are we doing in time? We're doing fine. Okay. So before we move on to the next step, um, where's everyone holding? Let me know. Is anybody uh, not not able to follow? And how could I help? Hmm. I got a passive aggressive response. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, so this is what we got going on. Um, this is what we got. This is what we got going on. Okay, so, who? Now, what we're going to do is make a background gradient. So, we're going to kind of pull together a couple of different things we learned, but we're going to use it here. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, make make a let's make a, a background layer. Um, so we're going to make another layer and then we are going to pull it to the back and it's kind of an intuitive motion. You're dragging the layer to the bottom. Um, don't do that. So how do you know when you're drag when it's, how do you know when you're actually putting it on the bottom is when there's like a blue line that appears on the top or bottom of it, okay? Because what you could also do is drag a layer into another layer uh, and you'll know you're doing that when, you, when you're hovering. So what am I doing? I'm sorry, let me explain exactly what I'm doing. I'm clicking the layer and then I'm dragging it to the location I want it to be, okay? So I could put it on top or under of the layer of type but I'm making a background, so I'm making a layer under it. Um, and then um, I'm going to make a rectangle and I want the rectangle to span the full uh, surface of my artboard. Okay, I'm gonna lock my type there actually. So I can't edit it and I can only edit my background. Um, okay, the next step I'm gonna do once I have that rectangle is add a gradient. Now I have been having some trouble adding gradients. So let me think about how I'm gonna do this. Like this. I don't really understand what's going on over here, but my color box. Let's go to color. Um, and while I'm figuring out how to solve my problems. Oh, so frustrating. Um, what, I want, what, I want, what we want to do is we want to create a gradient between these two colors we imported, okay? So what you should be able to do 
if you weren't having like screen issues. Actually, I have a way to solve this. Give me one second. Um, share. Okay, so now things should be a little better. So I added a person to see if there are any questions. Okay, so someone asked, how do I get my font higher than 72 points? That's a great question, but I didn't make it bigger by making the font uh, bigger in the character panel. I outlined my font. And I did that by right clicking and then um, selecting create outlines. And then I scaled it up as if it was a rectangle. Okay. So pull that back here. Okay. So now I think I solved my problems. Um, so how do we edit our gradient? Um, we double click on these circles. And for some reason, I'm only getting. Um, grayscale. And so I can easily change that by going to this little hamburger menu right here, clicking at that, clicking RGB. And I can simply select a color by selecting the eyedropper tool and clicking on the color I want to use. And I can replicate that for yellow. Okay, so I want to make sure that, that that was kind of a new thing. Right, um, someone said uh, that the rectangle is on top. That's totally fine. Um, the reason is because you created your type first and then you created your rectangle second. So Illustrator automatically layers things um, in kind of a sequence of, of when they were created. All you have to do is first make sure that your rectangle is on a separate layer and then, um, and then, yeah, okay, you, you solve the problem. Make a separate layer and then make sure your type is either locked or hidden or whatever. So, so now we have this and the, the, this is the default orientation of our gradient, um, but I wanna change that and so, Still in our gradient panel, there is a little window that allows us to change the angle of our gradient. So it doesn't only have to move, like we can see the yellow is on the right, the green, well, the yellow is on the left, green is on the right, but we could also change, change it so it could go diagonally or, or um, reverse uh, the way the colors are uh, trading. I'm sorry, blending. So we simply go to this little, um, how would we call it? It's kind of like a compass, like a, like a drawing compass. Well, it's also a 45 degree angle. That's what it's a diagram of. And we can change the angle and I can just double click on there and type 90 or negative 90. I think that's what I want. Yeah, that looks good to me. Think. No, I like that better. <laughs> um, all right, so you can see also that I'm only editing my um, my background and I'm not editing anything else. Um, I think the next step might take uh, might take time, so I think I'm going to save it for next time and we're just going to save this document and that's what I want you to do. Um, but first, someone said I can't get color just gradient so I covered that. Um, I double click on the specific color in the gradient that I want to change and um, th The way I um, dealt with that problem is there's this tiny little three line, it's called a hamburger menu, because there's like two buns and a piece of meat. So it's like three lines. And if you just uh, look at my screen, you'll be able to see what I'm looking at. Okay, so let me, let me undo it. Double click and then click on those three lines. 
and then there's grayscale, which is probably what you're seeing. And then I go, I went to RGB. That's the color, that's where I went to. And that allowed me to have a full breadth of color. Um, and those, okay, so those lines, those lines are only accessible, that menu is only accessible in this kind of paint palette. Um, the color, when you hover over it, it says color. So if you select that paint, painter's palette, then you'll see those three drop downs, and then you could change the mode of color that you're able to use. Okay. And that, okay, so we're going to leave this alone and we're going to come back to it next week. And we're going to add a texture. So let me show you what our final product is going to look like. Oh, we can see I use an ampersand over there. Um, we apply this texture to give it a, like it was printed with wood type, right? Like physical pieces of wood type. I um, mean, that's what we're going to do next week. So, I guess just to walk quickly walk through the pro, um, process of saving this, um, there are two simple ways. You can just press Control S on your keyboard, or you can go to File, Save, well, or Save As to save it as another document. Um, but since I already created this as a document and I selected where I want it to go, press Save. Okay. Um, okay. Someone asked a question. I want to go over it really quickly. Um, another thing that I want to do. Okay. So I, I created a Google form that will allow me to collect um, your insight and your feedback about how this class is going so far. I did it rather quickly, um, but I'm going to paste that into the chat. And I would really like if everyone can take the time right now to do it. Uh, if you already know, like I'm going to go over one thing. Someone asked a question, so I want to answer that. But if if you're already familiar with um, what I'm, what I'm going over, then it would be really, really helpful if you could go over the Google form really quickly and right. And I and I'm not collecting emails, so I I think it will be anonymous. Um, meaning uh, the form is not collecting emails. So let's quickly go over a question somebody had. Someone had a question, how do we, um, how do we outline text? Okay, so I wanna type some words here. Make sure I'm gonna open layer. Come on, unlock that. Okay, so let's say I have this phrase over here. It's live text, right? I typed it. Um, all I have to do is right click and then I could break <laughs> oh, <laughs> Um okay, I have text, I I right I have right click, create outline, and now um, squish it, pull it, do whatever I want to it. Um, you can see I also have points. So using my direct selection tool, I could drag specific points around, and make this look really ugly. But the point is now that instead of it being a, a, a font, like a piece of software, it's um, this just piece of vector thing. Did that make sense to the person who had that question? Um, someone's raising their hand.
Yes. Hello. Are you at a question? Yes. Okay. I'm really having a hard time downloading the, the files that you sent. Um, are you able to walk me through it? Because some, sure. I don't know. It just let's, doesn't work for me. Let's go through it. Okay. So first, is this what, uh, let me share my screen, of course. Is this what you're able to see over here? Um, are you able to see, is, are you able to see class 10? Uh, let me just double check. Uh, let me make it bigger one minute. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So the way there, there are a couple ways to download um, things from a folder. So one thing is to right click. Now, when you right click, right? So um, what do you see this kind of menu? So one second, I'm looking at my own screen now. What do you want me to right click on? Hello Sketch, let's say? Sure, yeah, that's great. So where do you right click? On Hello Sketch? Like yeah, so you, so you select it and then it should become like light blue. And how light. do you select it? By highlighting it? Just clicking on it. Clicking on it. When I click on it, then it opens me up to the picture of Hello. So don't double click. Which I think. No, was... I just clicked it once. That's what's been happening the whole time. So I can't. Mm -hmm. So even even when you're within there, even when you double click on it, meaning I'm I'm not sure why that is. I should when double you... click. Let me double click. No. <laughs> no. What I'm saying is that even even though that's that's what you're seeing, if you go to the top right corner, mm -hmm. you're going to see an arrow. You see like something that looks like a printer. And then you're going to see like an arrow facing down and that one will second. allow you want to show me by you what it looks like one minute sure, sure. uh hold on let me see yeah where is it okay. so first i want to show you that when i just want when i just select something i just click on it but by me that doesn't happen that's fine that's totally fine so then so then this is what you see right exactly got it so if you go to this corner over here, Google was, allows you to download the content. One second, one second. I couldn't yeah. see that one minute. Again, which corner? Yeah. The top right. Okay. And you see a little down face. Download, arrow. yes. There you go. So then what? So now it's downloaded on your computer and it's right. going to be downloaded probably in a downloads folder. Right. Right. So I've done that many times. So now what? Well, what's your question? Okay. So now it's down. It's by the download. So now what do I do? Where, how do I get to it? Um, so you get to it by opening up this. Um, a lot of stuff over here. So you want to go to your folders area. Right. I mean, this is a, a, little, a little out of my league a little bit, but um, you should see something that looks like this. At least this okay, is what I have in my computer. Where are you? That's not, that's not where I am. Because by me, when I open up my, I don't see that at all. I go to the downloads and then I see class 10. Is that what I'm supposed to see? Um, honestly, I'm not sure. I'm really not. I don't have that dark screen that you have. I don't see it. Uh huh. So oh, one second. Is this where is this screen? Is it by by uh, Illustrator? This is my computer. Is your computer? So this is my this is my document folder on my computer. This is not Illustrator and it's not Google Chrome. It's it's just my computer uh, document window. Document, not the download. Well, I'm. It sounded like you wanted to be directed to how do you find, um, how do you find um, your your downloaded image. So I right. want to help you with that. Although I, I'm, I don't right. Know so I am. I I see class class ten, and I open it up, and it tells me. 
uh, that if I want to buy WinRare for twenty nine dollars, buy Win WinRare. I don't know what that is. And then it's um, file folder class ten. What in the world? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I have no idea. Um. Okay. Does anyone else having that problem? So maybe that would be. A chat also, some why is your screen black? That's my question. Also. So this is this is not black. This is my computer documents folder. It's just the way I set my computer preferences. I see. It, okay. Meaning, I imagine that most computers, um, unless you're using a Mac, mm -hmm. will have a very similar way of organizing. And um, and showcasing your folders and your items. Um, you see, by you, it's written down like as lines. By me, all I see is like little square. That's it. That's what I see. Little squares like that. It just means I again. It's just a different. It's a preference to how I view my documents. It doesn't mean that um, you're in the right or the wrong place. But if so you're let's in this... say when you when you click on one of those things, let's say one of the downloads. Okay. So then what happens? What do you do? You double click on it or what do you do? It depends on what you want to do. Well, I want to import it into Illustrator, let's say. So you would open Illustrator. Yeah. Um, is, this, is this the screen you see? What are you? I'm watching you now. Which screen things? Well, do you understand how to download, how to import things into Illustrator? Right. I mean, that's what you were showing us to do, right? Right. So you go to file, um, right. you go to file, you go to place. Right. And then I'm going to go to my downloads folder. That's, that's what this looks like to me. A desktop documents downloads. So again, it was file, place, and then downloads. Mm -hmm. And then? And then I'm going to select the image that I downloaded. So I selected Hello Sketch. I downloaded Hello Sketch. Right. I select that. And I, I know it's yeah, selected. You select it by clicking once. That's it. What is that? Yeah, that's it. I just I just right. select it. Okay. And let me redo that real quickly. Select that. And then I could go to place. And now we can see that my cursor is indicating that it's loaded with an image. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again to place or, or what? You are already in place, right? You had clicked. Yeah, I selected an image and now Illustrator is saying, hey, you selected this image. Where do you want to put it? And I could, okay. as long as I don't click on anything, it's um, it's going to be a, a loaded, a loaded cursor, which means it's like holding something. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is, um, and I rec what I recommend you doing is drawing like a uh, like a rectangle. You see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Just like you draw a rectangle. And right. now, because if you don't do that, then you're going to import the image at full size, and it might be really really big, and you might have to zoom all the way out and make it smaller in order for you to use it at a regular scale. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so that's what it's all about. That's it. That's the uh -huh. whole thing. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate sure. it. Okay. Okay. Um, so again, I shared the Google form. So it would be awesome. It'd be really, really great. And I'd really appreciate it if you guys could leave me some feedback, some insights. Close. Okay, it's saving. Um, someone asked, would you be able to post an image on the project we'll be continuing next week in the shared folder? What do you want me to share exactly? Do you want me you, you want to share that you want me you want to see the final product? Is that what you're asking? So I can totally do that. 
Oh, sure. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, great. Um, so thank you so much for joining me. Um, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.